Hello, I am Kira Gabriel, and I am a pretty good student, which is not me trying to brag, uh, because I feel like that is actually more of a confession than a brag. But being a good student seems like a good thing. And it is. Good students have good work ethics, can manage deadlines and prioritize, and probably get a better education than students who don't work as hard, because I feel like education is one of those things that you get out of what you put into. But what we're putting our efforts into is this very weird, convoluted system that for some reason everyone believes in, which is the only reason why it works. I will really quickly explain to you how this whole thing works. So I am given information, which I then use at later times to write down on pieces of paper. But those bits of information have to come from my head and not from my classmates' head or from easily accessible materials and resources. Uh, if I want to use my classmates' heads, that's only for specifically designated activities called group projects. But I digress. So I'm writing this stuff down from my head, and then I will give it to the higher power in the room, the god of that closed universe, my teacher, who then checks over the paper to make sure I've remembered enough information correctly and gives that piece of paper a number. So that happens quite a few times, and I've compiled quite a few papers with numbers on them, and then all those numbers from all those pieces of paper are put into a computer, which takes the total of all of that and computes it as a percentage. And then, depending on what that percentage is, that percentage is assigned a letter. And then, just a, just a really quick word on uh, those percentages and letters. The letters are assigned based on a range. And wherever you are in each of those ranges, which range by 10%, you are given a specific letter. It doesn't matter if you are right on one edge of that percentage or the other, you still get the same letter. So two people with a 10% difference might get the same letter, while two people with less than 1% might get different letters. And then, we're not even close to done yet, and then, this is where it gets really weird. That letter is assigned a different number, and then all those numbers, which each represent a different class and a different experience and a different education from all those letters, from all those percentages, from all those points, from all of those papers, are averaged. And that determines the rest of your life. <laughs> And every time I think about it, it blows my mind because I am really good at that. That's why saying I'm a good student is more like a confession and not a brag, because what I'm really good at is a weird, convoluted, arbitrary system. And that's what the past four years of my life have been. And it's almost sad when you think about it because my education has been distilled into one number, 3.7, and that's good. I input my information, and that's what was spit out. 3.7, good luck. <laughs> and it's frustrating because nothing about that was real. Nothing about that was tangible. The most real part of that entire process was probably the pencil I held as I regurgitated information. So this year, I had my first little taste of reality. I mean, I didn't do anything crazy. I didn't pay for electricity. But I did, I did get a little sample cup of reality, and it's a good thing they give out free samples because as it turns out, I would not want to buy that. It turns out I am not so good at that. <laughs> to preface, this time last year, I was elected Commissioner of Internal Affairs. So I am the student advocate. And being very excited about this new position, I thought it would be a good idea to try to change something. <laughs> And the issue I chose to tackle was my high school senior lawn. And it's really not much of a lawn. Uh, to be more accurate, it should be called the senior dirt patch that happens to have a few little tufts of grass. But the senior lawn does have a bit of South Pasadena High School's culture in it. It's a rite of passage of sorts. Uh, you've made it through three years, and congratulations, now you get to sit here. <laughs> and really, it's not even the space that matters, it's just the principle of the thing. And speaking of principles, when I brought this to my principal, I had the complete expectation that she was going to say no. So I came prepared for battle. I had outside government funding, I had all my contacts signed up, I had a project proposal, and I had a meeting agenda. And the first thing she said to me was, the senior lawn doesn't exist. And I was like, mm, I, I'm pretty sure it does, because when I was a freshman, I was afraid to step foot on that thing, and now you can bet that I, well, as a senior, I'm not going to let any freshman anywhere near that dirt patch. <laughs> Obviously, I didn't say that. But she said, uh, the senior lawn doesn't exist. It's called the Tiger Patio. Everyone calls it the senior lawn, but there was no specifically designated senior area in the school plans. So after that initial correction, she was totally on board. She agreed with me and wanted to see a change too, which was amazing. 
and we decided that the purpose of the project was to create a functional, communal, and sustainable space. So then, this thing started to gain momentum. The administration was on board, we called a landscape designer, people wanted to give money to the project. ASB put in money, uh, my principal allotted funds for it, the PTA was like, yeah, okay. And uh, the senior class was gonna donate benches to it. So we had a problem, we had our solution, we had money and we had plans and it was going somewhere. And so we called up the district office and bureaucracy and reality. And you know inertia, you know an object in motion tends to stay in motion, an object at rest. I swear to God they should put bureaucracy on cars because there would never be brake failures. Also, no one would ever go anywhere, ever. <laughs> so after our first meeting with the district representative, we sort of realized there was a lot we still had to do. And it's not like the district didn't want it to happen. They were totally on board with fixing the senior dirt patch. But we were here with a whole bunch of people saying, yeah, let's do this, and a system saying, eh, hold on a second. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I was a little relieved because I expected since that first meeting that someone would say no. I was constantly expecting someone to say, we don't have the time, we don't have the money, we don't have the plans. Because this isn't gonna end in one distilled number. I mean, yeah, this will go through some weird arbitrary convoluted system. I do go to public school, there will be bureaucracy if the government has anything to say about it. But what this is gonna result in is something real. Plants are real and digging holes is real and I don't know how to do that. And I think that might be why people get so discouraged and jaded about real life. Because no one tells you how hard it is. Just like no one tells you you have to sign the backs of checks, so you cash a check and it bounces and you're like, what the heck, this sucks. Or you, start, or you start a project and you realize this is hard and there are no numbers or letters or averages here and how do I do this? And that was like a little slap in the face to the arrogance of my youth because I get that teens are naive but it might have something to do with the fact that their worth is based on a dumb game that gives them one shitty number as a prize. <laughs> And there's a culture around protecting youth in innocence. And yeah, I understand that child labor should definitely stay illegal. But where else are you going to find passionate people who still have the energy and arrogance to push against all of those no's? Teens are in such a weird space because they're learning that everything is impossible. But we still believe that we can do anything. I want to be president of the United States and chief justice, but I know that's probably not gonna happen. But it would be nice if someone told me, yeah, you could do it. It'd be really difficult and you'd probably make a lot of enemies and you probably wanna start working on your equivocating now, but you could do it. And it sort of feels like no one is willing to speak with that much candor. It's either your first grade teacher telling you, you can do anything, dream big, or jaded millennials saying, don't even bother. And neither of those is reality. Those are no more real than my 3.7. So what I've really learned from the Tiger Patio Project is that we shouldn't be messing around with these weird systems and structures or assigning people's values based on how well they play a convoluted, arbitrary game. And we especially shouldn't be doing it during the formative years of people's lives because once they realize, hmm, that's not how anything works. It sucks. <laughs> and I think people lose the arrogance of their youth when they realize the last four years of my life mean nothing and that check you cashed bounces and I think it would be worthwhile to teach reality and perseverance because obviously no one knows what they're getting into but we do know that we're going to get into it and we know that it's going to be difficult and someone should tell you that that should be something you learn and as much as I would like to say yeah we did it we still haven't even broken ground on the tiger patio so as an 18-year-old, having had an uncomfortable brush with reality and still clinging on to the arrogance of my youth, I'm going to say it. It's going to be difficult. And at least some of the time, if not all of the time, you're going to have no idea what the hell you're doing. And it's going to suck. And it's going to be really, really difficult. And no one will tell you what you're getting into because they're afraid that if they do, you might just say, no thanks. And yeah, you probably will be really unprepared and everything will take at least three times as long as you expect it to, but stress tears 
are not something to be ashamed of. And no one else really knows what they're doing either. And you can do it. Thank you.